what we've found is, or what I found, and as a team, what we found is that th these, the clientele that we were serving really does not have, um, let's call it the, the, the budget to be able to have us do it the way that it really needed to be done. And <laughs> even if they took part of it and we did the advertising for them, that wasn't working. Today, I am so excited to be joined by Jamie Teasdale. Jamie is the founder of Propel Business Works, which she founded all the way back in 2009. And since then, she has been lending insight and creativity to businesses all over the U.S., giving them the tools they need to plan, promote, and prosper. Jamie, welcome to the Hi, show. Brooke. Hi. I am so happy to be here. This is going to be fun. It's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited. Jamie and I, funny enough, met. Have we decided what year it was yet? It was like 2014. We're almost 2014? going on. Yeah, almost 10 years. At Social Media Marketing Week in New York City. Yeah. So forever years in marketing. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Like, exactly. It's like dog years. <laughs> Every yeah. seven years equal to one. Okay. So Jamie, first question, as always, which is why did you decide to start your marketing agency? What made you take the leap? Well, so in 2008, as the down economy actually started um, taking jobs, it ended up taking mine. Mm -hmm. And I knew at that point I was working with a really cool company and I knew at that point I was no good for working for anybody else. And I really wanted to work for myself, but I didn't know, what I really wanted to focus on. And I took some time away and figured out that I'm, I'm made for marketing, right? <laughs> I'm made for branding and business development and strategy and, and um, a company that my parents knew was looking for some support. And he said, do not make me hire you as a marketing employee, start a business, and become a 1099, become a contractor. And the light bulb went off and that was it. We were done. I started it immediately. And in that down economy, because 2008 and 2009 were so, I mean, they were, businesses were being snuffed out left and right. Mm -hmm. But businesses were really, small businesses were really interested in knowing how do I survive this? So it actually just, it was the perfect timing for what I'm doing. It was serendipitous. And it was a client who gave you the idea. Yes. Which is correct. phenomenal. Yep. I yeah, love it. I love it. So give everyone who's listening a brief history of your business. So it's a marketing agency. And at one point in time, you did have a special focus on social media services. So kind of give us the rundown of, of what that looked like in the beginning. Sure. So Propel Business Works uh, tagline and our whole basis of everything that we do is to help businesses plan, promote, and prosper. So we do everything from helping um, come up with a strategy. So planning the launch, the development of a brand, um, the, the website that they need. And so basically everything soup to nuts kind of um, from a marketing standpoint and establishing yourself um, with a brand and, and online presence. And that also translates into um, blogging, email marketing, and social media. So content planning. And then we also did do and did, from a social media standpoint, um, the management of those plans. So we put together communication plans, we can hand it to the client, they can do it on their own or give it to their team, or we can manage it for them. And then, of course, we do all kinds of other things like the consulting side of um, marketing or uh, managing a website, additional collateral pieces and, and all of that. But over the years, um, you know, as, as you learn about your strengths and your weaknesses and also what you're just not willing to do or what you're not enjoying anymore, mm -hmm things have kind of sloughed off here and there. So um, social media just 
ended up being one of those things. <laughs> well, let's dig into that anymore. If you couldn't tell by the title of this, by the time you're watching it, either on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast platform, you kind of said, and we've, we've talked about this all along the journey, yeah. but pretend like we haven't. And okay. <laughs> you said, I think I'm going to stop offering social media services. So I think the exact words were, <laughs> I want to, it's not even about, I think it's like, I can't, yeah. I, I really it's more declarative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what were the key reasons? What led to that conversation mm -hmm. that we had or to the decision itself? I've thought about this question so many times and I want, I want to name names like, um, social media platform owner names, but I'm not mm. going to do that. In this <laughs> okay. So Just say insert name here, insert name here. Yeah. The, the, the powers that be in the social media world that, that are making and have been making decisions, um, and do make decisions about the direction that their platforms are going in my humble opinion, are doing it for all the wrong reasons. Um, and for years and years and years, for a decade, right? Um, and at the point that because I work with solopreneurs and I work with micro businesses, really, I mean, I work with small businesses too, but, but that's as far as I go. The mm -hmm. solopreneurs, the micro businesses and the small businesses are really, they have to put so much effort into being seen and they have for for a decade, for even maybe longer than that, right? Um, so all of that effort and and having that be on their shoulders when they're a solopreneur or a micro business, so they either are forced to do all of their own planning, manage all of their own posts, review all of their own stats, and advertise, and, and, and all of that, or hire a company that can do that for them, which ends up being pretty costly if you do it right, right? Mm -hmm. You have to do it right. And so what we've found is, or what I found, and as a team, what we found is that th these, the clientele that we were serving really does not have, um, let's call it the, the, the budget to be able to have us do it the way that it really needed to be done. And even if they took part of it and we did the advertising for them, that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Or if we did the, the content and they focused on the other marketing, the promotion, just because where that dollar, where that budget comes in for them, they have to be part of the process. Um, whether it's a team member of theirs or it's yeah. them doing it themselves. So at the point that you have to pay to play in order to be seen, I was like, okay, we're, uh, I, I am too much of a small business lover to force somebody to pay me to do the work. It just, it stopped making sense for all, all of the reasons. So you decided that you're not going to offer these service any services anymore, but then how did your clients and your team respond? Because you're not going to be servicing these clients any longer. Your team members won't have these hours or this work to provide. So what did that look like? Right. So our clients, actually, there was, there was a point where what we were doing, we realized just wasn't enough. The, the amount of, of work and effort and the review of all the stats and analytics and everything that we were doing, we just needed to do more. They're, they needed to invest more in their ad budget. They needed to invest more in their content budget. They needed to add, we needed more time involvement. And be, again, because of the micro business aspect of our clientele base, that, that bottom line budget it just didn't make sense. So as we started having these conversations, they realized, okay, well, let's start shifting. There, there was other opportunity. Let's start shifting our communications um, to our email marketing, which we had already been doing, but now mm. we can really start focusing on growing that list in a different way. And so all of that kind of came together and we just said, why don't, why don't we just shift our strategy. Let's shift our communications to something else. Um, you've got a good base or, or whatever it was. And from a team standpoint, Propel has always been, um, has always worked with 1099 contractors. We've had employees in the past, but uh, that's not my 
that's not my strong suit. So um, luckily I have a really great core base of um, experts in their field, content writers, graphic designers, web programmers, all of those things, and social media managers. And at the point that we really wanted to kind of take a step back, we did it, we actually did it for like two more years and specifically with a, just a handful of clients. And then they kind of just went, this just isn't working. And it's because mm -hmm. we didn't have the right kind of budget that they needed in order for us to really do it the right way. Um, and so, and then, and then with all of the platform changes too, right? It, it, it's so many different aspects of why social media is so hard to keep wrangling. Um, but so clients understood and we just started saying, we can do your strategy for you, but we don't do management anymore or, and we don't do ads anymore. We have, we have pros that we can refer you to. Um, and then from a team standpoint, by the time we had like two social media management clients left, that, that last one <laughs> actually came to us and said, and, and what was funny is this particular client said, um, I, I hate to say this, and he was kind of nervous about it. And we both giggled because it was such a relief. I was like, I, I, I just want you to be the last one. Can we just call it a day? <laughs> and so we were on the same page with it, which was really yeah. brilliant. But yeah. Well, it's interesting too, because, you know, all of these side conversations happen for me just in our industry of social media, anyhow, of like how hard the platforms have become you know, Facebook used to feel like the the end user, the end result was like any business owner, including yeah. small or solopreneurs or micro businesses could get on that platform and learn how to do their own ads. Yes, and it right. seems like more and more they've moved away from that end goal or that end user um, because it's gotten so complicated. And even for agencies like ours, it's gotten really complicated if you need any sort of like customer support right. or exactly. the AI flags your ad for like some innocuous thing. So, yeah. So, okay. So it sounds like the, everyone was in agreement. Like this is too hard. The budget's too much. The time, you know, commitment is, is also too much. Like this isn't for us, but can you clue us into the overall impact this had on your business? Right. Because this was part of your revenue. So how did this affect revenue? How did it affect your client base and what's the overall impact that you're seeing now? And are you happy with the decision? Oh, so happy with it. <laughs> Honestly, what, what I actually believe in um, from a professional standpoint and also a business owner standpoint is focusing on your strengths, right? Mm -hmm. So so if we know that something is becoming too big of a beast for us to do really well and serve the clientele that we're passionate about and who we want to target, like I've always been passionate about small businesses, grew up in a small business uh, family and I understand all that they go through. So I, I will never veer away from them. I won't work with corporations. I won't work with, you know, huge nonprofits and, you know, big businesses. My passion is the solopreneur. It is the micro business. It is the smaller business. So how that has kind of all translated is that we get to now focus on what we're passionate about and and actually spend our time doing what we're really good at, what we're really efficient at. And that has actually opened doors to taking more work mm -hmm. that we love doing instead of grinding out what is really hard and um, kind of a, I wouldn't call it a drudgery, but it, it's just a lot of work. If you if you are not focused in it and you, you have your systems and your processes totally dialed, like you do, Brooke, like you have been a, a referral partner, right? Mm -hmm. I, I refer businesses to you and whether or not they're the right size, the right target, that's up to you, to you guys to decide, but you're the pro you're the one that, you know, we're going to refer to. We're right. not, I can't even have those conversations anymore. So it's, it's actually really brought um, freedom, I would say. 
Yes. So there's a, a past episode that everybody should go take a listen or watch um, with Tom Shapiro. And he talks about what happens when you niche down. And everybody's mm-hmm. scared to niche down, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you and I have been talking about this from, from, from my business and my perspective. I'm trying to niche down. Um, and mm-hmm. and the, the scary part is, right, you're eliminating X amount of percentage of your business. In his case, it was like 50%. Yeah. of his revenue yeah, that he cut off. That, right? Yeah. I mean, it sounds scary, but on the other side of that, he ended up in the next two years growing by 250%. So right. I feel like you're saying the same thing, which is, you know, as marketers, sometimes I feel like we want to say yes to everything. Oh, yeah. we can do PR. Oh, and we can do social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah we do ads. Yes, right. we can absolutely do influencer marketing. But can you? Like, can you, spread you really? You yourself in by doing that and you don't do anybody. You, you're not allowing yourself to be an expert in any one particular area, which yeah. if, if marketers really want, and this is kind of, if, if marketers really want to do social media, then do it well, do it the right way and focus on it or focus on maybe that's one of three things that you do, right? For us, I want to be the brand developer. I want to be the, the website, um, builder and designer and strategist. We love doing that kind of content and the blogging and the email marketing and everything surrounding that. But that whole social media aspect, it was just too, it was too big. It, and, and, and not only too big, too complicated. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're talking about um, even, even the Facebook business manager. Oh my gosh. That is I don't, I don't know any small businesses who can actually take the time to wrap their brain around that. And ads have become a huge beast too. Mm-hmm. It, it could be simple to kind of go through, but, but business manager doesn't make it simple. Mm-hmm. So who is Zuckerberg actual? Oh, I said a word. Um, <laughs> I said a name <laughs> actually trying to, what is he trying to accomplish? He's trying to get more money for Facebook and you know, there's, uh, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Pros and cons we'll call it. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about one alternative, which was email marketing, but can you dive deeper into that and also tell us like, okay, so you're, you're, again, if anybody's listening or watching, you're deciding to niche down, you're deciting to cut services, you're going to have these difficult clients with your, your, your clients and your team. How did you provide alternatives to Mm -hmm. those clients who were previously utilizing the service that was going away? Um, And was there any pushback at all? Well, so <laughs> what's what's really frustrating is that in oftentimes and what we've what we've learned and, and heard is that you have to be in social media in order to build your list, right? And while part of that may be true, I don't think that that's completely true. Where there is opportunity to grow um, an email marketing list, then you actually own you, you own that list, right? Mm-hmm. You you don't run the risk of having a social platform shut you down for any no reason at all or or any particular reason at all and then lose all of your followers in a second and have no opportunity so if, if we can build the list and there's a lot of different ways to do that outside of social media but if we can build that list and then market to that list then we have we have rabid fans right from the start, right? Um, if if we're doing it right. there, There's this whole content strategy around that. And then of course the SEO side of blogging and getting those emails out and how you communicate around that. Um, I just don't, I, I'm, I'm, I don't even have one foot out the door of social media. I'm just done with it. I don't, personally, I don't have them on my phone. Um, and I, and I can tell somebody if they're asking me now, which platforms should I be on? And I could say, well, you could do this and you could do that. It's going to take a lot of effort and it's going to take some advertising dollars and you're going to actually have a lot of time and effort putting a lot of content out there to be seen if you don't advertise because you have to grow organically, but you could do it, but you could do it this other way. Uh And we have this whole other strategy. And so that's just using your website. It's using advertising dollars in a different way, maybe through other platforms, Google, online, Bing, whatever it is. There's all kinds of different ways that we can get people's attention these days. So it's not just about social. 
Agreed. Agreed. So we've also talked about, this is another conversation for another day, but we've (laughs) also talked about, and I actually kind of modeled our end of year forecasting and planning after yours. And so I'm curious, did this, was the, you know, was the writing kind of on the wall and then you had your, your yearly planning and, and then this became part of your broader vision and strategy and why you decided to change? Or was it like the writing was on the wall and you just cut the head off the hydra right then? That's it. It was the writing was on the wall. I was done with it. I, what I, I like to tell people, if you know what Strengths Finder is, and I believe in it very, high, very, very much, very highly for um, any small business owner, especially when you're working with contractors who you, you don't really know who they are to begin with. If you can have them take Strengths Finder, this is just like a sidebar, but you will learn so much about where their strengths lie and how you can work really well with them. Anyway, my top strength is responsibility. So as a responsibilitarian, <laughs> it was really hard for me to continue taking people's money and doing what I would call like a half job. Um, and so once once we got to the point of realizing I can't be responsible for this anymore, this is not something that I'm willing to take on um, or continue with, then we just said, okay, I'm not, we're we're not taking any more clients. And then the clients that we did have just kind of over time, they just trickled out and we were able to focus on clients that we did want to work with those website projects or the branding or the communication in a different way and the strategy around all of those. So it wasn't, it wasn't even about, yeah, now how do we phase this out? It was just like, we're, we're done. I'm just not, we're just not doing it anymore. I'm breaking up with you. Yeah. We are, we are done. Um, so for those who are listening, like myself included, by the way, you know, what do you think some of the drawbacks are? I won't, I won't bait the question here, but what do you think the drawbacks are or that, that come with offering social media services? Because I know, you know. Well, drawbacks of, of offering social and then executing it well, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of two different I mean, maybe that is one of the the drawbacks is the amount of work that has to be done. And what we were finding is that from a planning standpoint, we had to be months ahead of whatever was coming up. We had to have campaigns drawn out for, you know, at least half the year, if not the whole year. And how much planning goes into that? And then all of the communication back, look, I'm like getting highs, all the communication (laughs) back and forth between the client just to get that content approved or tweaked. And then the additional um, work involved in, you know, creating all of the assets and, and then managing all of it and making sure that it was happening on time and then managing the, the, the conversation online, the communication that was happening, right. And monitoring all of that most of the time wasn't something that clients even wanted us to do because it takes a specific type of, of and level of time involvement that they weren't willing to pay for or they couldn't pay for. Right. Right. And then, and then adding a a dollar amount for an advertising budget, the the drawbacks for me are the ever-changing pace of or the pace of the ever changing platforms, right? And the decisions that you have no control over. You mm. you just have to constantly be learning about that thing. And I think that was part of the other reason why it was just like I, I'm done. I I this is not enough of a passion for me to continue investing this much time in continuing ed. <laughs> um management, all the conversations, the communications around all of the tables, it, it almost seemed to me like it was a disservice if it wasn't the, the sole focus that we wanted to be, because it's such a huge piece of the pie. So, yeah. I really can align with, with what you're saying about like, you know, again, we're tempted to be like, yes, we can do that. And then figure out how to do that thing, you know, right. because of the money, the money, the money. But mm-hmm. I think it's, I would appreciate you more as a client knowing that you really do have my best interest at heart 
And you would say something like, hey, what you need for this service isn't something that we can provide. And also, you know, being realistic, you don't have the budget required to pay to play. Um, So on on that note, given what's happening right now, right, you're, you're an expert, you have lots of experience with this. And then let's look at now, which is the market. And it's wild out there for social media. Threads was like the new thing. And then you see like this sharp, sharp, sharp drop off, right? And then Twitter still on fire. (laughs) Um, What do you, (laughs) what would be your advice to other marketing agencies who offer social media services right now? Should they reconsider? You know, what's your what's your strategy or advice for these people? And should they pull back? Should they keep the pace? Like, what, what do you think? I think that is a personal decision, honestly. I think from a from my standpoint, if you cannot do it well and put food on your own table, mm. right? If you are discounting your services because the client can't afford it and you are working 80 hours a week just trying to make it happen, is that worth it for you? I think the priorities um, that you place for your business, for yourself, for your family, for your home life, for whatever that looks like, far outweigh just making a social media plan work for a client, right? Um, (laughs) Everybody is different. And in my opinion, because it's such a huge part of the marketing world, it should be done cautiously, (laughs) carefully, (laughs) thoroughly, absolutely thoroughly. And, and with a, with a focus, I mean, if, if, you're not focusing on social media in that way, how well can you actually execute and help a client su- succeed with it? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and thinking about one of the things you said earlier, which is funny because I still see this too, even as far down the road as we are with social, is like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't care about um, community management. I don't care right. about like re- responding to people. They, I care about the creative. And I'm like, what? You, <laughs> like, you can't just do that. I mean, like the whole purpose is having the conversation, right? Starting the conversation and then having the conversation. Yeah. Continuing that conversation throughout the customer's digital customer journey. And, but it's like I'm saying, it still surprises me how many business owners and I'm, you know, from the solarpreneur all the way up to like some pretty serious brands still don't put any stock in the social part of social media, which I think is is part of what makes it so hard for marketers, right? How do you prove the value of the conversation? Right. Right. You know, acquisition and attribution is very difficult in that way. But and research after research after research shows that if you do get involved in brand conversation on social, your brand does better. People buy more. People are more loyal. (laughs) And from that from that standpoint. okay, so. (laughs) Leave it to my dad to instill high customer service um, standards in me, but. From a customer service geek, let's call me a geek (laughs) on that level, if I am online and I can't easily communicate with a client or excuse me, with a business or a brand, what is my first response or my first thought about that? Am I going to try again? Maybe if it's that important, or am I going to try to go elsewhere and get that really good service? Everybody is in this kind of instant gratification gratification these days they can get information and and access to things almost immediately thank god for amazon right or maybe not but whatever amazon has taught us that we we can get things immediately and they weren't the first but from that standpoint how how are you going to compete if you don't have that conversation and actually just respond within a timely manner There's no option for waiting or hoping that somebody's going to come back. So, yeah. 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 I I think that has been a struggle with social media professionals and will continue, unfortunately, to be a struggle. (laughs) And you know what? I, from my whole story with social media started years and years and years ago, but it cemented in 2019 
I had this incredible platform, or this incredible profile on Instagram. I absolutely loved it. It was my baby. It was on my intellectual property. I posted my own photos, my own content. That's where I went. I had a great following. It was feeding my um, email marketing list. And Instagram, powers of B, randomly one day decided I should be banned. I should be, uh, my profile should go down for no apparent reason. And what that taught me, and I emailed and I emailed and I emailed and I never hear back, right? Okay, so nobody, the Instagram doesn't care about me. <laughs> they just don't care about me. And so I'm serving all my content to feed a beast that can at any point pull the plug for no good reason. And finally, after, you know, however many emails I sent, I threatened legal action and told them, you are... <laughs> You are actually holding hostage my intellectual property and my attorney will be involved if I don't. And miraculously within two days, and this was like, I don't know, two months after I had lost my profile within two or three days. Oh, we're so sorry. And my profile was back. But in that time, what that taught me is, hmm, this is a real thing. Like how many times has Facebook just had an outage? It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, what do people do? They, they talk about it they everywhere freak else. Out. Like, mm -hmm. What are we going to do if Facebook, if we don't have Facebook or if we don't have uh, Instagram or if we don't have whatever platform you're on, if they have an outage or they decide to turn you off, what are you going to do? So I took that as an opportunity to say, okay, look, I'm not, I'm not doing this just to feed the beast. And I took all of my content back into my own hands. And I've been, we've been blogging on the Propel site and using my, our content to benefit us from an SEO standpoint. And from that, we've also built a whole other platform of <laughs> encouraging small businesses that you don't, you don't have to just do it because everybody's doing it. Think about other ways. Think about how you can be authentic with your brand and not just plug content into a machine just because you think you need to be there. Uh, I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. Um, well, no, I mean, that's really interesting because it kind of leads into my next question, which was, you know, which was going to be, uh, how did all of this affect your agency's marketing mix and strategies for your own brand. But it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is we learned a valuable lesson not to build on rented land. And, yes. and that seems like that was the big takeaway, not only for you, but something that you are also are teaching your clients about yes, for leaning sure. on owned places for content. Am I right? Absolutely. So my, again, if, if everything that you're putting out there is your own photography, your own words, why give it to Instagram or Facebook or whoever you're giving it to, to build their empire, right? Mm. Allow it to build your own. And there are strategies around like doing both if you need to do that. And you really feel like you have this huge following on Instagram that you need to continue. But, um, but I, but I also, There's, there's so much more to um, giving your intellectual property away and then having the opportunity to monetize it, not through a social platform, right? Mm -hmm. And my, my whole standpoint on what I learn is to be able to educate others that we're, we're, I'm an example. I, yeah. There's nothing else that I'm here to do, but be an example. Well, except for the knowledge that I can pass on in, in any other way, right. And be a consultant or build websites or whatever it is. But there is so much to be said for not just doing something to do it. Mm. So I think this is a good time to remind people who are watching or listening as well. You know, uh, a lot of us are using AI and ChatGPT to come up with content. And you cannot create content inside of ChatGPT or other generative AI sites and copyright that. 
That's right. That is what has been decided. So just be really careful and mindful about where you put your content, what you own, your IP, as Jamie's saying. Make sure you protect it at all costs. Yes. Um, okay. So another question. This is a this is a kind of a sneaky, sneaky one. But <laughs> looking ahead, let's say things calm down in the social media world. Things going to go back to like status quo. It's a little bit more normal. Do you ever see Propel reintroducing social media services? Or are you yeah. like, you're, you're, you're broken up forever? No, we're broken up forever. I don't <laughs> see, I don't see any, um, we're in the future, right? We're, we're already, I mean, I'm, I'm an eighties baby, so I can't even tell you what I didn't think was possible back then that I'm watching happen now. Mm -hmm. And with all of the introductions of all these different social platforms, many of the clients that I've worked with are like, well, don't I just have to be on all of them? No, let's just talk about what each one of them does and who is on each one of them and then where your brand actually fits. And then let's really focus the conversation on that platform. What, again, like I could get hives. Um, <laughs> thinking, Just thinking about going back to it, what I, what I feel like I would like to do and, and that I've been an example of doing is allowing people to kind of push pause for a second, assess where you're at, take stock of your priorities, and then make decisions that are best for you and take the foot off of the pedal of obligation. If you're feeling obligated to post, if you're feeling compelled to just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll so that you're engaging and doing all that stuff, how much time are you spending doing that versus what you could actually be charging money for. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, that's, that's another thing is I, one of the very first things that I knew I needed to do when I started Propel is not do my own bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. I love doing my own bookkeeping. I understand it. I know how to do it. If my bookkeeper, God forbid, something ever happened to her, I could pick it up and run with it. I might have to like dust some things off, but I, I would be able to do it. But all the time that I spend, because I, I'll go deep in the weeds and like do all the budgeting and all the things and understand. And all of a sudden, half a day is gone, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, my, my July books may be reconciled or whatever, but I have spent four, six hours or whatever it is. And yeah, I can um, contain that time if I really need to, but I, if I enjoy doing that, but I spend too much time doing it, let somebody do it for you that will take a fraction of the time where you can actually focus your time making the dollars, working with the clients, working on the projects. Where can you actually focus the time that you need to spend? And I'm I am a huge proponent for not wasting time on social media. And there have been so many studies that also show how we have digressed as a society because of it, how mm. much is happening, how much um, dis-ease is happening and even depression and, and all these kinds of things that are coming from it. So I, I'm, I'm done. I'm over. <laughs> no, you there's, there's no social decision. Yeah, there's no social platform that would come up that that would make me do that. I love it. So before we get on to how everybody can find you, I guess we'll leave you, audience, with this question. To social media or to not social media? <laughs> that is the question. And it sounds it like it's a personal question. one to make. So, Jamie, I know people are going to want to connect with you, especially if they're thinking about offloading social services at their own agency. So what are you working on? Where can we find you? How can people connect? Well, right now, um, we're, we're working on all kinds of things. We have um, some really cool websites. You can find everything that we're doing on PropelBusinessWorks.com. But the 
if you go to the top of the website, you'll see Propel Social. And one of the things that I'm working on right now is actually momming hard. <laughs> so I actually was um, blessed to have our first baby a year ago. And it has been like learning through a fire hose, gratefully. <laughs> I have this incredible team who has been able to sort support me in this first year of mom momhood. But um, while my social posts are not as current or as regular right now, they are pithy <laughs> and strong <laughs> when they are there. So I'm working on some website projects and, and with some really incredible uh, clients. Um, if you do find the website and I haven't posted in a while, give me a little grace for starting a new mom, mompreneur role. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it so much. And by the way, if you find any pictures of her sweet, sweet baby, I mean, she is like delicious. I just want to eat her up with a <laughs> spoon. You. Um, all right. Well, everybody, that is the end of another marketing agency show. We will catch you next time. Thanks, Brooke.